out of the gate. I mean, of course, you know, you may have caught people on a bad day. Maybe they're they're ninety percent, you know, good, ten percent off, and you caught them on their cheat day, right? But odds are that's probably not the case. But we have patients that are really good and may have a bad day every now and then. So hey, fine. If you're doing great and you're on point and you're in great health and you want to cheat every now and then, I always recommend try to choose the the least damaging cheat possible, right? That probably isn't the best example of that. Uh, but in general, food plays a major role, right? Because food's going to have the nutrients to run your immune system, right? Our fat soluble vitamins are antioxidants, you know, zinc, magnesium, selenium, all play major roles with the immune system. Um, our antibodies are made from protein. So if you're not getting and digesting good protein, you're not going to be able to make good antibodies for your TH2 immune response. And then obviously, if you're eating a lot of inflammatory food, the more omega-6, the more you stimulate your prostaglandin E2, that's more the inflammatory side, the more you're going to have unprovoked immune responses, and you're just going to be chronically inflamed. And then you may have this cytokine storm thing we talk about because you don't have good balance to your immune system. And so also on top of that, right, um, we know how much carbohydrate, especially refined processed carbohydrate, it feeds a lot of bad bugs. So if you have a lot of fungus overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, um, bacterial overgrowth, these bugs prefer the refined processed foods, right? It's going to just be easier to digest, easier for, to feed them. And so you're going to create overgrowths like that. And these bad bugs obviously produce other types of toxins in your body, right? Bad bugs eat your nutrients and poop, poop. And then instead versus eating your poop and, and producing nutrients, right? Bad bugs take the nutrients you're eating and they'll produce more toxins and endotoxins and uh, different metabolites, lithocolic acid, et cetera, versus producing B vitamins, producing vitamin K, producing um, different beneficial acids that prevent the colon from overgrowing, right? Probiotics, acidophilus literally translates to acid loving. And so Good probiotics actually produce and lower the pH in the intestinal tract, which actually makes it harder for bad bugs to grow, right? Bugs tend to prefer a more alkaline type of um, environment to actually grow in the lower intestines. That's a great point. I don't think many people know that about acidophilus. I'm glad you broke that down simply for people that you actually want this lower pH environment because that's not really a place for these pathogens to thrive versus when you're on proton pump inhibitors, for example, right? Acid blocking medications, or if you've got an H. pylori infection, you're going to have that higher pH. You're going to have that more alkaline gut. And then that's where things really get into trouble. I mean, you and I, I think we've done a whole podcast on this, but the, the brief spark notes are lower stomach acid, age, stress, not chewing your food. That's going to increase malabsorption and feed the bugs too. So this once again, goes back to the same thing we've said a hundred times. You get your gut tested, figure out if you've got this overgrowth going on. Don't wait until you're in a critical situation. We got to get your gut fixed now. Think of working on your gut as preventative medicine. How revolutionary is that? Yeah, absolutely.